to life and in this video we are going to make a calculator app with python and it's like a simple calculator which has four operations and can do math and it can have up to 15 characters inside the box now we are going to use something called an entry box an entry box is a small box that you can type characters and numbers in but we're not just going to do that we are going to type numbers and do operations with it but first we need to open up our drawing window or canvas. Now the canvas that we're using is called the Tkinter, um, T or the 2K for short. Now the Tkinter is like the simple module that you could draw, you know, uh, more complicated shakes, shapes that you would, you know, in the uh, turtle module because the turtle module is older and simpler than the TK. And so we are gonna take what we will learn from the turtle module and make and do the Tkinter module to create a calculator UI. Let's get started. All right, so what I did was I opened up the Tkinter import. Um, so here I imported it, put the star to tell it that I am importing things. Um, then we got the root is TK. Now this root is just, you can name this anything. I could call it, um, you know, a bunch of garbage and it would accept it, but that's really complicated to say. No one's just gonna type a bunch of garbage for that. You can even type car equals TK or calculator equals TK. We're gonna use root because that sounds really programmy and root is the root function. So it kind of makes more sense to do that than typing a bunch of garbage to a window. So uh, let's get started. Now the next thing I did was add the root.title. I just wanted to rename the tkinder because in the star it just calls it TK. And, you know, it's not really that interesting. So I named it calculator. Let's run it and see what happens. There you go. So we got a calculator app open and it's just blank. And that's all it does. It basically just opens the window. You can see us as cow. I mean, right now we haven't really defined how big the window is. So it's just like, it just says cow right now, like a cow bean or something. I don't know. We can even widen the screen, which we shouldn't be able to because the calculator is not gonna be this big. Anyway, let's move on. And now we are going to create our little window called the entry box. Now an entry box is a little box that is, you know, looks like an inner box. Like if you had like a package, you know how it like folds it. It looks like kind of like a box without the folds on top. And you can put characters and numbers in there. But we're not gonna put characters in there because that doesn't make sense. Now instead of using uh, strings, we are going to use floats and integers. Now we could use integers and we could use floats. Now the way to decide what should we do is saying, well, what operands use floats and what operands use integers. Now for division, you can use integers, it would work. But for multiplication, since we're using that star, it's going to give us an error saying that it can't convert the string or the integer to the float, um, which the integer is very similar to a string, by the way. It'll think that everything that we typed in there, even the numbers are just text, just thinks it's nothing. So let's create an entry box. And we're gonna make the entry box a certain height, a certain width. And we're also gonna resize and uh, reshape the windows. All right, so I gotta open this E entry. Now you can see how it says entry box and it says the root, which is the TK, so the Tkinter. The width of the entry box is 35 and the border width is five. We also want the grid, which is going to append the box on the screen to be row zero, because we want it at the top column zero because we want it to be at the top and the column span is going to be three because that's how wide we want it to be the pad x 10 and the pad y 10 because we want it to also put at the top x and y is both at the corner so uh, let's check this out we're going to run our code and see how this entry box turns up all right there you go so right now i could just type garbage into the entry box and you know right now it's just basically this entry box is only just for typing i mean you could test your you know keys with the you know keyboard with the entry box you could just type like a little story like you know uh, the, the wolf ate <laughs> the pig there you, you know you could type anything and that's just an entry box where you could just type characters but we want to not allow that to type characters and only allow you to type those buttons so we're going to block that access by putting in a button clip function we also want to get some buttons on the screen that are our numbers. But how do we do that? Well, we can use the grid function to append things on the screen. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the root, the width, the border width, and the, and the column span to create a new window. We're also gonna use lambda, which is a value, to tell it to use the float function to put decimals and also allow it to do complicated math problems. Let's get started. All right, so I put some buttons up and we can see how 
each of these is button one, button two, button three, button four, button five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then zero. Now look how I organize these. You might think, well, well, might it start like 20, 40, 20, 40, 20, 40 for the pad and X, pad Y and pad X? Well, the reason why I didn't do that is because no one puts a calculator like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It goes like nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, and then three, two, one, and then zero at the end. Because that makes more sense and people are used to that. So well, let's test our code and see what happens. There you go. So basically right now, all we did was save all these buttons in memory. Now we didn't even uh, tell it to do anything but just save all these buttons. It did, that's all it did. Because we haven't defined them to put on the screen or append them. So what we're gonna use is the grid function to put it on the screen. All right, so I got it up and I have a button zero, button nine, button eight, and button seven and so on down. Um, and remember how I said that we are putting all the buttons backwards? Well, I also did three, 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 two, 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 one, one, one. Normally it would be one, 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 two, 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 three, 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 and then four. But in this case, I just flipped it around because obviously we're doing the normal calculator style. So uh, let's try this now and we are gonna see that our buttons are on the screen. There you go. Now, obviously the buttons don't do anything right now. And I could still only type garbage on the screen and that's all I could do. I could also type numbers, but that's not what the keypad. So we gotta edit this keypad to make a few more buttons and allow us to type in the screen. Now, if I try typing the zero, it might work, but it's going to just leave it on the screen. It's not gonna really do anything. And it also gives us a little message saying the button click is not defined. Now the reason why it says that is because we haven't defined that button click function, which allows us to click buttons. Now, every time we click a button, it'll keep giving us that message. And let's get rid of that. So the way to get rid of that is to create a little define that tells the computer that the button click is real and it is a function. All right, so now what I did was I added a button click number. Now this number, actually came from up top. And we're using the numbers from the button one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we're passing it on each of them. Now you can see how I use the lambda, and then, which is the value, and then put it up here. Now you might want to be wondering up here, then why did I put a string? Well, that string is just because, you know, telling it that we have to put text up there. We have to change that later and tell it that we also want to do, uh, you know, floats and integers. Um, so, uh, we have to define that we are not using the strings. But the reason why these strings are here anyway is just because we're using them just as a placement for when we next are going to put the floats. So uh, let me show you how this code works. So in the beginning it says define button click. This is, I just named it button click because we you know when you click a button. Then I got the e.get or the e dot, uh, or the entry box, which is the box we said. We said, okay, so I want the current number to be the entry in the inside the entry box and it's gonna say delete the past number that we did and then insert the next number that we want to do so it's a little bit complicated right now because you know we haven't even uh, defined the rest of the functions yet but for now all it does is put numbers on the screen and delete the past ones so let's run our module there you go and now it should give us that annoying button click error there you go Right now, I can only just type a bunch of numbers on the screen. There's really nothing that we can do right now because it's just saying when you click a button, put it on the entry box, which is set here, and put the current number inside the entry box. That's all it does. And that's kind of boring, so we want to make this a calculator app. So now we need to add a few more of our clicks and then add some code to tell it to add more numbers on the screen. Also, we are also gonna tell the screen to delete the past number that was on the screen, but save it on the but save it in memory so that we can use it and then do the operand that we want to do to times, divide, or anything else that we do, we're gonna do. Um, but to in order to save it in memory, we have to create a define function to help to do that. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna add the equal and the addition. What I added was two things. I added the plus and the equal sign. Now obviously these functions right now do nothing because it's gonna give us an error about the button equal and the button add. So we're not even gonna run the program yet. So we have to create defines up here that will tell it to do that. So let's get started. 
Um, actually, but one more thing. You know, I said Pad X 91 and 39 because we want these things to be down the screen, not up. So, uh, next we're just going to do the button clicks. Alright, so I added a button add and a button equal. Now, all the button equal does is it says, okay, so the second number in the e.get or is equal to the e.get or the entry box. The next thing it does is, okay, I'm going to delete the past number that was in that box. Then it says, okay, so I see math is equal to addition, so I'm going to now call the math addition. Next it says, okay, so I see e.insert, so it wants me to insert a number. And it says, okay, so fnum. And by the way, that fnum comes from the first number. I just shortened it by using the global. So uh, that's how it works. Um, the next thing I did was I said, okay, so I see a float. So we're going to call this a float number. And we're going to use a second number that I defined up here, which is the entry box. We're going to put whatever the number was, take it, plus it by the second number. And we're going to give us an answer. So let's run this code and see what it does. Okay, so right now it has the 7, 8, 9, 4, 5, 6, and the 1, 2, 3. Now, right now what I did is I just said, okay, so I have the equal and the button add. Now, do you remember how I said we have to append them on the screen? Well, that's what we're going to do right now because that's what the buttons are going to do. So let's add the button clicks and uh, uh, let's get it started. Now, the reason why I said let's see what happens is because I was worried that it was going to give me an error about the button add and the button equal because, you know, I was like worried that, oh, will it understand about the flow or the FNOM? That's why I ran it. I mean, I was just going to see what happens. But now, it's a, since it's working, let's append those buttons on the screen. And plus, we already made the buttons appear, but now we have to append them. All right, so I added a button add and a button equal. I also defined the rows and columns. Now the column span is the span of the column at the end, or the edges of the lines. So uh, let's move on, and now we are going to run our code. So we append to them. All right, let's see what happens. There you go, so now we have a plus and equal button. Now, the only problem with this is that now we've got this ugly edge to the equal sign, and there's this big empty space. So we have to edit this and get that kind of working. So the next thing we're gonna do is add the rest of our buttons. One of them I wanna add is the clear button. So we could clear the screen every time we do something. So let's press five plus five is equal to 10. Now I also added a float, but that's why it says that zero at the end, but I kinda like that because it makes it more understandable. I mean, everyone knows that 10.0 is 10.0 or 10. So it makes sense. And now the whole bad thing about this is I can backspace and that's about the only way I can delete things. I want a clear button so I can clear that screen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in the code and we're gonna edit this window so that now we can add a clear button. We're gonna follow the same steps, but this time a little bit different. We're gonna add a define, then we're gonna add the buttons and then we're gonna append them. Now the first thing I did was I added the button root text and then I division, button root text, multiplication, button root text, or subtraction, keep calling it minus. And there you go, so that's all it is. But right now it's going to give us an error saying that it doesn't know what divide, multiply, and subtract mean. So let's go and define everything that we did before. Now it's gonna be very, very similar to button add except instead of saying addition, it's gonna say subtraction and division and multiplication. So uh, let's get started. All right, so so far I have the button subtract, button multiply, button divide. And I also have these buttons on here, but they're not appended on the screen. So uh, all I did was I said, I changed the math division, I changed it to multiply, and I changed it to subtraction. But we have one more thing to do before the buttons work. You see how up here if I said, if the math is equal to equal to addition, and then insert whatever was in that addition, and then plus the first number and the second number that we did, well, we can't just do addition. We also have to do subtraction, multiplication, and subtract uh, and subtraction. Or, or, uh, I just keep saying the same things. Anyway, let's move on. And now we are going to add a few more operands to add on to addition. All right, so I got down and now I have the division, multiply, subtraction, and addition. I also reset the another of uh, those um, little uh, shell things and I just, I just copied the code there to make sure it was working somewhere else. Um, I actually copied all of it in fact. So let me move that out of the way because we don't want that right now. And the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to append all those buttons on the screen. 
which is the same steps that we did before. All right, so it's all working, and uh, I just did five times five, and now I'm gonna try a few more operations. If the clear button works. Okay, now let's try two divided by two is equal to 1.0. Uh, and let's clear that. Eight minus eight is equal to zero. Now, one thing you should never do is divide by zero. Now, I didn't make code that will tell it not to, you know, crash programs if I divided by zero. Now, uh, you might have heard this from a brain pop video um, of how they, when Moby was dividing by zero and he was broken. Well, that would make sense to you because now you know why if you divide by zero, that Moby crashed because, you know, when you divide by zero, it programs crash. So never do that. Um, I could change that and I could divide by zero if I had some code, but we're just making a simple calculator. And this is even cool. I mean, if I compared this to the Windows calculator, Let's open the Windows calculator right here. I mean, this obviously is a lot, you know, more complicated and cooler than my little calculator app I made over here. And it has, like, you know, all these cool functions and log and in and 10 to power and all of these really complicated things. It even has trigonometry or geom ge even geometry, not just the trigonometry. Um, and it's so much more complicated than this calculator I made. But still, seeing your own app on the screen, seeing your app working and all good is really fun. Now, if you are using a uh, earlier version of Python, lower than 3. Point, uh, like, you know, the 3.1, then this program may change a little bit because you can actually use integers in the lower versions of Python. But I would recommend using floats just because it makes life a lot easier and simpler. So even if you are working lower than version 3.1 or version 2.8, I mean, I would still recommend using floats. But anyway, thank you guys for watching and I will see you next week.